So sharing failed reaction data and sharing sort of reactions that, that didn't lead to the expected results is quite useful because these are perhaps the most informative examples. If somebody ran a, a reaction or they ran an experiment and they had a surprising outcome, that tells us two things. The first thing is that that experimenter thought it was worth trying in the first place. They had reason to believe that, that experiment would be successful. The second thing it tells us is that it of course wasn't, right? And there's something else going on, some underlying phenomenon that maybe we don't fully understand, or at least that experimentalist didn't fully understand. And this, this adds a sort of richness to the, the data we have, and it, it lets us learn different trends in the data. You know, we get to learn not just from positive results, and trying to understand sort of from the literature what's, what's worked well, but we explicitly see these negatives to know what didn't. And that contrast helps these machine learning systems learn. It helps them realize what it takes to have a successful experiment and what might lead to an unexpected, a more undesired outcome. And that again connects to the idea of just having this more formal, uh, wider understanding of chemical reactivity that we can capture in these models. Creating this sort of culture change in how data is shared and trying to have the chemistry community help take ownership over its curation um, does, does present some obstacles. So it, it does take extra time, right? It's an additional investment into the data. But one of the exciting things that we're seeing is, I think everyone is trying to identify the potential benefits of using these types of tools. And everyone is seeing around them, right, the impact of machine learning and trying to understand how that can affect their research in their domain. Right? And there's obviously the, the very high profile successes of machine learning and protein structure prediction, in game playing and machine translation. And there are also those successes in chemistry for synthesis planning and predicting the yields of chemical reactions. I think as more of these success stories become visible, it becomes more apparent what the value is in contributing to them by supporting the the data generation process and by supporting the development of the tools by these well-curated examples. Um, but there's certainly a, a culture shift that's needed and that's one that's hard to instill, but um, we're, we're hoping to help encourage this, again, community-driven efforts to take ownership over the generation and curation of, of reaction data to improve all of our research processes. Right now, it, it's not the norm to share your failures and it's not the norm to to share sort of reactions that you've tried that, that don't fit into the narrative of a final manuscript or publication. That's perhaps a fault of the publication environment and expectations around uh, what it takes to publish and what readers of you know, scientific journals would like to see. And I also think that there's a change in how many reactions people are running. So even just the sheer number of experiments people run before they uh, submit a publication is changing. And if you're thinking about running not just a dozen reactions on the bench, but a thousand reactions in an automated platform, there's of course a much, much richer data set sort of behind the scenes. And so including that, that full story in the publication is something that I think you know, readers should, should emphasize their interest in, that journals should emphasize their interest in. And so I think it's a change that can come at, at a number of different levels, right? The people who write papers, people who read papers, the journals themselves, and the publishers. I think creating those community standards has been successful elsewhere, like in structural biology with the protein data bank, and in crystallographic data storage. But we just haven't had that mindset change in chemistry yet.